Welcome back to another episode of the Austin is Zayback show. Today, we have a treat for everybody watching, and uh, we have, by popular demand, Andy Elliott back on the show. Round two, Andy, I appreciate you being here, brother. Let's go. Dude. I'm ready, baby. We're going to change some lives today. I would say anybody that's watching this, and, I'm, and he's obviously going to run it because it's his thing, but grab a pen, grab a piece of paper, right? There's going to be an idea that we talk about today that'll be a million dollar idea. There'll probably be a $50 million idea and there'll probably be a $100 million idea. Yeah. So like if you're driving, right, don't grab something to write with. But if you're actually listening to this and you can grab something, like what's written is retained. Mm. Okay. So if you want to get off this podcast, you want to really learn something, make sure you grab something to write with. I love that. You're going to drop a lot of bombs today. I know that for a fact. Um, let's talk just real quick about a couple of things that we were talking about before the show. You know, talk to me about, you just talked about you're building a 2,500 uh, person facility in Fountain Hills. So talk yeah. to me a little bit about what you're working on right now. Yeah. So, so our, our real estate, where we are at now, we have a 70,000 square foot building. It's a big gym in the middle. Um, our conference room will hold about 500 people. We use it multiple times per, per month. I love the face-to-face -face game, right? Digital real estate would be like everyone in the world everywhere. And you can reach them through streaming. You can reach them through social media. You can reach them just by, we get 100 million plus views every 30 days. Um, you can reach them that way. But I like the face-to-face -face game. I'm a big person that if I can see your eyes, if I can get you in front of me, if I can see you, I'm 100% sure total immersion, I can change your life mm. without a doubt. So the face-to-face -face game is a big deal to me. Like to me personally, everybody's different. But to me, the face-to-face, -face, I am, a, I was a hard learner in school. Like I wasn't really good when they would do like, you know, trying to tell me and, or write on a whiteboard. But when somebody would show me something in my face, I would learn it. I would retain it. So I'm a visual learner. And by the way, I think everybody that's watching this is a visual learner. Okay. I mean, that's matter of fact, one of the best ways they learn. If you were sleeping in your house right now and there was a noise, mm -hmm. okay. Would you go back to sleep or would you get up to check on it? I'd get up to check on it. Why? Because you want to see with your eyes, yeah. there's not a real threat. And so a lot of people in this era, we hear all this stuff about success and this and that and this and closing and selling and, and, and building this and doing that and becoming great. And, you know, like the greatest thing that I've learned to change someone's life is to get them in front of me. Mm. And I know that can't happen everywhere, but like, dude, like if I was to tell you that you could make a hundred million dollars this year, mm -hmm. what would you want to see? A pay stub, right? 100%. A, a checking account. Mm -hmm. What if I showed you my checking account? It had a hundred million in it. Yeah. You'd be like, damn, okay. Mm. It's freaking real now. Mm. Why? Because our eyes are the things that we've always used to like confirm that this is real. So if you heard a noise in the middle of the night, you would get up to yeah. see that there's not a threat and then you would go back to bed. But you would be an idiot to go, oh, I think it's okay, but I heard a noise. But yet, you know, like, you know, there's no one else in the house and you heard a noise like, okay, I'm going to go check. Yeah. I need to see it with my eyes. So anyways, I love the face-to-face -face game. So we're building the Elliott Army Event Center now. It's going to hold 2,500 people. Um, we're expanding three more buildings. The fourth building will be the Elliott Army Event Center. It's going to be 25 million in buildings. Um, we're just going to build our compound out. Mm. I've got about a hundred guys and girls that work for us now. We've got an army, we've got a team, and uh, it's it's just our next level. The face-to-face -face game, I wanna do it twice a month. Mm -hmm. That would have 5,000 people that are in front of me every month that I could change their life. Plus the digital real estate, but the face-to-face -face game is my favorite game. Mm -hmm. I've seen, if I can get you in front of me, 100% you'll leave and you'll never be the same again. Yep. Total recreation, I'll have to give your ass a new birth certificate. I love I'll it. give you a new name. 100%. The old you's dead. You talked, this will tie into what we were talking about just before the podcast, but at the level or where you're at now in your life, I guess I should say, you mentioned that it really doesn't make a ton of sense to do much traveling anymore, right? And and obviously you're building the the real estate that you're talking, the event center and everything in your own backyard, mm -hmm. you know, so people can come to you, right? As opposed to you going to people. Can you elaborate a little bit on, on and, and Andy Frisella, we were talking, he said the same thing, right? He's like, I'm done traveling, I'm done speaking. Why is that? Well, so if you really want to grow, right? I mean, you're in a world right now where hypothetically all these people are telling you what they're doing and what's going on. The question is, are they really building a real business? Are you wanting to be the cool guy in the room or do you really want to build something? Mm -hmm. I'm just asking. Andy Frazella has First Form. First Form is a real business. If you drive out to St. Louis right now, you can see Andy Frazella. You will see that he has three 180,000 square foot buildings back to back to back, mm -hmm. filled with a thousand employees, a thousand of his teammates. He has a real business. You can go see him right now. You can go to his buildings. 
And so I have a real company. I have a real business. I, I, I became an influencer on accident because I wanted to generate leads. And as we put our message out there, all these people are like, dude, I love that. I resonate with that. Oh, wait, this guy's not sugarcoating anything. He's telling the truth. Oh, this guy's an underdog. Dude, he's actually living proof that anybody can be qualified for a good life if they follow this play. Mm. So I'm running this play. I'm not getting anywhere. Why don't I try that play? And then they run that play. They get in shape. They take care of their family. They get close to God. They're good to people. They learn every day. They, they basically think about your worst competitor. Think about the competitor you would never want to go up against. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Would it be somebody that learned every day? They're your worst competitor, yeah. someone you would be afraid of that would scare the shit out of you. 100%. They train every day. They're in the right circle of the right influence. They work out like hell. They take care of their mind. They make good choices. They, they say no to anything that doesn't have to do with growing or being good. Become that person. Yeah. That competitor that would scare you, become that. And now you're dominating. And so anyways, like, I just, I just want to build something real. And mm -hmm. so we decided in the beginning... We wanted to build a business and we did, but then I was accidentally getting caught up and like going around and like, I'm going to be honest with you because when you're changing people's lives, it feeds your ego mm. and it makes you like, it makes you want to do more of that, but you can do it without leaving your home every day. Mm. And I didn't understand that. And what I learned is that I was going around speaking at all these events. In the last two years, we were on hundreds of stages everywhere doing this. And everybody's like, oh my God, this changed my life. It's amazing. But then my team, which is my family that I love, was at home and I was gone. Mm. And these people all moved across the country to come be there with me. And now I left. Now, listen to me. I'm going to tell you this. I built my team to be leaders and they don't need me to babysit them. They don't need me to be there with them every day. But like, it's like your wife, you love her to death, yeah. right? You don't need her to be in front of you every day, but you want her there. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. That my team, like we love, we love each other. We love being in each other's presence. That's the Elliott army culture. And it was my vision in the beginning with my wives that we were going to build this thing where we'd all be there together. Mm -hmm. And then I take off and I'm doing all this. And I start to realize that, man, the people that mean the most to me, which is my direct company, my direct team. I'm like, my goal, my job is to impact my children, my wife, and my direct team, and mm -hmm. then impact the world. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I needed to come back home. So we decided to change the plan, and now we're building out this massive infrastructure at home where people can fly in from anywhere around the world, and we can crush it and kill it. And we're only doing a few speaking events a year. But the reason why Andy Frazella said I'm not going to travel is because he's putting boundaries on his life mm -hmm. because he knows that it's his responsibility to his wife his company, um, and really his people that follow him around the world to build a real business so that he can inspire other businesses to be great by building a great business. Mm. Look, I know a lot of influencers right now and people, they're really famous, but they really haven't built anything. Okay. And if social media was to disappear today, there wouldn't be anything there. Mm -hmm. And so like, I just want to tell people, if you can really build a big life, like I'm in your office today, you guys have a big, beautiful facility. There's, there's lots of people. They're all working hard. They're hungry. They got great attitudes. Everybody's hugging. That's a real culture. Mm -hmm. That's a real environment. That's a real business. If this all disappeared today, you're still going to walk out here and take care of your whole team. Mm -hmm. And that's real. And so I just want to tell you that, like, I think for me, for me to change the world, for me, it's to build the greatest company on planet Earth to inspire other companies to also build great companies and great cultures and great environment. And by the way, this is called leadership. Yeah. And so anyways, but that's what we're building. But dude, I'm telling you, it's a very, most importantly, it's a very special time to be alive. It's a very unique era. I wish I could tell you that everybody was fire breathing dragons and they're just kicking ass and killing it. But really, uh, the God of this generation is comfort. It's a God and it's comfort. And if you wish to be comfortable, you will be uncomfortable. So I would wish for every one of you right now to choose uncomfort if you ever want a comfortable life. And now's the time where the reward is very high. Mm -hmm. They print free money. It's all around the world. And all you got to do is step up and be a leader. That's all you got to do. And by the way, it's like, that's why I believe in like total recreation. I believe that anybody that's watching this right now, like if they want a new life, if I say anything or you say anything that inspires anyone to win a new life, guess what? You got to give up your old one. Mm. Yeah. Super important, guys. If you're watching this video right now and you're like, Andy, I'm not built like that. Bullshit. Yes, you are. Got to train.
It's the way it works. Train or complain, it's your choice. Okay, every day I train the greatest in the world. You know what I mean? Are you ready to kick some ass and build your legacy and make history? If you are, in the description box below on this YouTube video, there's gonna be a little link. You click on it, enter your phone number, email, full name, and I will personally reach out to you in the next 24 hours. If you're serious about kicking some ass, going to the new level, recreating, next version of yourself, I'm your guy. Let's kill it. Talk to me about the real business, right? Why is it that in 2024, there are so many people out there that in, maybe you can kind of fill in the blanks here, but they either don't want to build a real business, like they just want this kind of like, you, you said it, right? Uh, they want to be an influencer, but at the end of the day, they don't have anything tangible, right? And I feel like more and more and more young people, they want to do that as opposed to building something real, like what you built. Is it just because it's too hard? They don't want to, they don't want to do the hard work. Well, what I think is, I think that a lot of people, when you plug in on social media, you don't know who's real and you don't know who's not, mm. right? So there's a lot of people that are giving advice. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so with all these people that are giving advice, question is, who do you listen to? Mm. And by the way, like, here's what I want. Number one, I want to be financially free, but you know what I want more than to be financially free? I want to be free in my mind. Mm. You know what that means? That means that your mind will dictate your thoughts or are your greatest responsibility in life. So if anybody's taking notes, I'd write down, my thoughts are my greatest responsibility in life. Dude, your wife can't make you happy. Mm -hmm. You have to make you happy with here. And, and, and by the way, how do you do that? By having a good perception, by having a good perspective. You want to build a badass business, you want to get rich? Number one, step one, become a leader. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Self-lead. Get yourself in shape, human excellence, raise it through the roof, Write down what are your core values, what are your standards, what will you die for, and guess what? Make those a non-negotiable. Mm. You can't love anyone else if you don't love yourself. You can't be good to anyone else if you're not good to yourself. Hey, and by the, this shit about like, just be who you are. Don't just be who you are. Become someone great that inspires other people to become great, mm. right? Like, like that's your job while you're here. And uh, anyways, man, as I just think about this, I think that's the deal is that like, I think all of us, all of us want to be really successful, mm -hmm. but none of us are going to get successful if we can't control our mind. The greatest skill, the greatest uh, weapon of a warrior is his mind. Mm. Okay. God gave us a heart and he gave us a mind. And by the way, like you'll tell, like, I won't be around. You got a really good heart. That's why I like being around you and your wife and your team. I I'm around people by examining their heart and they've mm. got to have good hearts. By the way, super important that we say this. God gave you a heart and he gave you a mind. You know what he gave you? He gave you another day. He gave you an opportunity to change. I swear to God when I say this, mm. I, I, made, I made money in sales, you know, 500 grand, a million. I made up to two and a half million. All that money fell through my fingers. Mm. All the money, okay? Like I'm telling you, I was never who I was supposed to be until 39 years old, I woke up. So my point is, is if you're watching this and you're 18, here's what I'll tell you. You got to get it all in life. Mm. People say, no, dude, you either sacrifice for what you want or what you want becomes a sacrifice. Dude, like what's important to you? Your I, marriage, yeah. your girl's important, right? Mm -hmm. Guess what? Go kick ass in business and don't take care of her. You'll wake up one day and you won't have her. And guess what? If me and you were going to compete and I was doing the same thing you're doing, if I got a badass personal life, if I got a badass family at home that supports me, if I got a badass marriage and you don't, I will kick mm -hmm. your ass. And you know why? Because, dude, I got purpose. Mm -hmm. Dude, you can't beat someone with purpose. People with purpose end up getting crazy. People with purpose never stop. People with purpose are on the hunt every freaking day like a lion. Mm -hmm. People with purpose, dude, you walk in the room and you're like, oh, my God. It's like moral authority. Like, that person's up to something. I can see it. That person's doing big shit. Mm -hmm. But people that work hard, that are burned out, that literally aren't taking care of all these other things in life. I run into people all the time like, why you talk about the fitness shit? I love your business stuff, but why you talk about the fitness? Hey, either take care of it on the front half or you're going to be taking care of it on the back half. Mm -hmm. It's up to you, dude. Right now, you got a bad doctor's report. And you literally go under those lights, those bright lights, and you're not in shape. You're not taking care of yourself. You're out. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Dude, freedom and then, and then you know, your health are the two things that right now, if you found out today that you had cancer, you would give ever you'd give all this up just to have your health back. For sure. Okay. Yep. And so like, and so like we figured it out at 39, I figured it out that I wanted money. And so I would not focus on my health because I knew I needed money. I thought success was money. Success is not money. Matter of fact, they, this is funny. They print free money. Mm -hmm. I didn't take care of my health. My marriage wasn't number one to me. I wasn't the best dad in the world. By the way, I was better than most. So I'm like, babe, look at everyone else around me. We're kicking their ass. I mean, look, we're better than everyone. Mm -hmm. 
She's like, better than everyone is poison, Andy. Why can't you be the best? I freaking married a man that I thought was going to be the best. And now you're hitting me with that better than most shit. Mm -hmm. And by the way, like, it makes you think like, I don't like this. Mm. Like, I don't see you're a boss, right? Mm -hmm. You're an owner. Yep. People tell you yes all the time. Mm -hmm. My wife don't tell me yes. And that's why her job is to grow me. Mm. Her job is to protect me from distractions. Her job, she knew I was a project when she married me, was to see out all the days of her lives that I'd become the man I'm supposed to be. That's, that's her job, okay? And then my job is to become that for her so I can prove that she was right for betting on me. I always say this, man. Are you proving someone right or are you proving them wrong? I'm proving everybody fucking wrong that says I wasn't gonna become nothing. But I am proving her right that betting on me was the best thing that ever happened. Mm. Also, I wanna tell you a reason why we're growing so fast. I was telling you before this, our company did 160 million last year. And I wanna tell you something. Mm -hmm. You know how we did it? And I would, people say like, how do you do it? You want me to tell you? Yeah. People are either running towards a life they want or they're running away from a life they hate. Mm. Mm -hmm. I will, if you're running towards a big life and I'm running from a life that I hate, I will outrun you every day. Yep. I, I run with the chip on my shoulder, man. I'm a broke person with money. I'm broke. Mm -hmm. I'm broken. I'm broke. I'm hurt. I'm always, I'm always, I'm always afraid we're going to lose it all today. I, I, don't e I don't even know what we have in the bank. I don't know anything about my life. I don't want to know. You know what I want to do? I want to get out there and be the greatest version I can be today until the day they bury me in the ground. Mm -hmm. Dude, if people would just get around this kind of language, this kind of shit we're talking about, yeah. and people are like, why are you so fired up? Why, Dude, because at 39, I was dead. Mm -hmm. And I've been through this story with you, but at 39, when I was dead and I decided to change my life, and by the way, listen to me, I've gotten crazier since the last time yeah. we were together. Oh yeah, for sure. Right? Mm -hmm. And it's because I figured it out. Mm. Okay. You got one life. Yeah. That's it, bro. You got one. Okay. If you want a new life, you have to completely give up your old one. Mm. Completely. Everything. You have to kill off everything. And I'm going to tell you, dude, the cool thing, because you're a real estate guy, but the cool thing about your mind is it's only so big, it is a piece of real estate. Yep. You know what you are? You're the gatekeeper to your mind. Mm. Okay? You buy this big piece of development, and you're going to build all these beautiful houses back in there. You're the gatekeeper. Mm -hmm. Who are you letting in? What are you letting in? Who are you surrounding yourself with? Do listen to me. I'm telling you right now, every time someone says something, I, I can let that come in or let that stay out. Mm -hmm. This is how we've scaled so fast. God made us to be unreal. And you know what? He's using people right now, truly, that have like screwed up, that have messed up, um, because he's looking to make the biggest testimonies. Mm. To truly, I mean, I truly will tell you that I think that anybody watching this, a lot of people, they're not, no one's kicking you in the balls. You're kicking yourself in the balls. Mm -hmm. Every day, you're being shitty to you. You're freaking talking yourself out of winning. You're being crappy to you. You don't love yourself. You're not taking care of you. No wonder no one else is taking care of you. Like, dude, you have to take care of yourself. You have to physically go and, and, and really be really good to you so that you can have this perspective that, oh my God, I can't believe I'm alive. Oh my God, look at all this opportunity. And by the way, if something bad does happen, be like, dude, like, like there's gotta be some good in this. Mm -hmm. Dude, right now, if you got sued, you say there's gotta be some good in this. Yep, 100%. Okay, but it's easy to say, but really doing it. And that's why like I've built this like culture, mm -hmm. this cult, right? Of winners, people who do the right thing, who raise their standards, who put boundaries on their life, who literally every day, like eat, sleep, and breathe winning, who are loving to people. Dude, God, this is a ministry. Like God yeah. is at the forefront of everything that we do. And people always say, well, yeah, but I see you cuss a lot. Yeah. The Pharisees, right? Mm -hmm. They were cool on the, and clean on the outside, but they had the darkest hearts. Yeah. Okay. So anyways, I just want to say like, I'm this like psycho competitor, which is like, if you read my shirt, yep. it's a psycho competitor. And by the way, as loving as I am on the backside of it, it says, may God have mercy on my enemies mm -hmm. because I won't. Yeah. So bet against me. Why did it take 39 years till 2019 to figure out what you just said? Like, like, was it the wrong information? Did you have the wrong information? Was it you were hanging out with the wrong people that whole time? Like why? Why did it take so long for you to freaking 180? Okay, same thing with me, same thing with you, same thing with everybody. I didn't want to hear the truth. Mm. I didn't want to hear the truth. Yeah. 
My wife told me it's time to stop traveling. Babe, what do you mean? We're on fire right now. Yeah, the kids need you. I need you. The team needs you. We need you here. But babe, see, the butt part, Yeah, I did that for 39 years. I told you, my wife said she's learned to live without me, mm -hmm. which was the truth. Yep. I was not present. The greatest superpower that a human being can have is being present. I know you probably won't believe this, but if you grab my phone, it's, I, I, I don't have any social media on my phone. Mm -hmm. Let me explain this again. I don't have Instagram. I don't have Facebook. I don't have YouTube. I don't have LinkedIn. And I don't have TikTok. I have zero social media on my phone. Mm. And we get 100 to 150 million views every 30 days. You know why? Because I know I'm an addictive person. And that, I have a team that runs that for me. Mm. I am the content. I create my shit. And then they, they are leaders. They put it out there. Super important, guys. If you're watching this video right now and you're like, Andy, I'm not built like that. Bullshit. Yes, you are. Okay, you got to train. That's the way it works. Train or complain. It's your choice. Okay, every day I train the greatest in the world. You know what I mean? Are you ready to kick some ass and build your legacy and make history? If you are, in the description box below on this YouTube video, there's going to be a link. You click on it, enter your phone number, email, full name, and I will personally reach out to you in the next 24 hours. If you're serious about kicking some ass, going to the new level, recreating, next version of yourself, I'm your guy. Let's kill it. I'm not watching it. Mm. I'm telling you right now, when I started blowing up on social media, I was addicted to watching those numbers, those views. I know your wife knows. Mm -hmm. She's like, I know. See, but if she told you to delete all your social media right now, you'd be like, yeah, babe, but... No, delete it. Get rid of every bit of it. Mm -hmm. You got a team to run it for you. Why do you need to be on there? Why? I'm very rarely on there. But no, to yeah. feed your own ego. Mm -hmm. And that's what I learned. Yeah. I learned that I was literally for 39 years wanting to do things my way. And so like, why did it take 39 years? I didn't want to hear the truth. Anybody right now want to become a multimillionaire? Do me a favor. Listen to the truth. Mm. All change starts with the truth. And the problem is, Nobody wants to hear the truth anymore. Mm. They don't want to hear the truth because the truth hurts. But the truth is the only way for you to build the life that you really want. Mm -hmm. They say discipline is, is hard. Regret's fucking hard. Mm -hmm. That's the hardest thing ever. Dude, I, I dropped this social media reel the other day because I was in this, uh, I was in this, uh, in, was in this mastermind. We were in Cabo mm -hmm. and I just lost it for a minute. And I just said, dude, I was like, nobody, and I'll be very, I said, nobody's going to fuck my wife better than me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nobody's going to be a better father to my children than me. Nobody's going to be a better leader than my company than me. Nobody is literally going to work out with my workout partner harder than me. Nobody's going to do any of this better than me. And that is my job when I'm here, that the people that, that believe in me, for me to give everything that I have. So on the day that they bury me in the ground, I ain't letting no one come replace me. I'm going to live on. I'm going to make history. I'm going to be a legend. Yeah. And so like, I want you to think about that, right? When I'm doing things during the day, I'm thinking about my wife. Like, is this the greatest anyone could ever do it for her? Is this the greatest anyone could ever do this for my team? Mm. Dude, I am telling you, like, I think about these things. I'm so aware. And by the way, growth starts with self-awareness. Mm -hmm. Winners look in the mirror and own their shit and losers give it away. Right? Yep. Do winners love to be critiqued? Losers hate it. The truth is the only way to be great. And so everyone right now, we're changing millions of people's lives. Mm -hmm. None of them get a life change until they own the truth mm. and they get honest with themselves. Honestly, right? Yep. Like, like, is there another level for you for your wife? Mm -hmm. Yes? Yeah, 100%. Bring it. See? Mm -hmm. Bring it. And what is, is there another level for you guys financially? Mm-hmm. Bring it. Can you? It's like there's all these other levels, but we can't get them until we get brutally honest with ourselves. So I think that's why our brand has been blown up. And honestly, dude, either you hate me or you love me. Yeah. But I will tell you this, okay? You may hate me now. Marketing is the right message to the right person at the right time. Mm -hmm. So if I tell someone about health and they're like, oh man, screw this guy, I'm gonna quit, I'm gonna unfollow him because I'm sick of his six pack of your fired standard shit, yep. right? Okay, cool. When you get diagnosed with diabetes and your doctor goes, you're either going to get healthy or you're going to die with diabetes or you're going to be on medication and this is going to happen. What are you going to say? 
I'm going to go follow Andy. Oh, I'm going <laughs> to get healthy. Damn, I've been yeah. saying that yep. forever. Right? Yeah. Like, like okay, what, what about your kids? Mm -hmm. You know, do you love your kids? Okay, cool. Whose job is it to motivate your family? Yours. Your Yours, right? Yeah. Cool. You're so busy on work. You're doing all this shit. You know, your wife's doing her thing. What about you're in there motivating the sales team all the time, right? Mm -hmm. What Do you think she wants to get motivated? Mm -mm. Well, she does. But she in does. A, in a what if she way? came in and goes, yeah. hey, babe, Dave, the neighbor, really has been motivating me every day mm -hmm. on my way out to the car. He's been, he's been really teaching me things that he's learning. You're like, Dave, the hell are you talking about, dude? <laughs> yeah. That's my deal. She goes, well, you ain't doing it. Dude, I was, I, was, I was feeding all the wrong things, and I, that's why I wasn't growing. Dude, there's this running on a treadmill mentality, which means if you don't face honesty, you're going to run on a treadmill. Mm -hmm. Okay? So how did I get off the treadmill? How did I start going uphill? Well, how did I do it? It's easy. I started, I started facing the truth. Mm -hmm. Dude, I love the truth, and I love honesty. But anyways, that's how we've grown our business. That's how my team has this cult-like loyalty. Literally, like, I told my team, I'm like, guys, I don't want to be there with you when you're just cashing checks and making money. I want to be there with you when it's hard. Austin, mm -hmm. if you got a problem going on in your life, I'm the first to know. Mm -hmm. I don't give a shit what it is. I want to be with you when it's harder, better than when it's easier. And so my company and my team, like, I want to suffer with them. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're building this thing that's being crazy, man. Like, you know, you're talking about Danny and these guys. Like, that's why, that's why. And these guys are young. Dude, I'm building these guys that are, that are 18 to 25 years old. Now, if you're older and you're like me, like, dude, like, going home and, like, you know, like, not being present with your family and working for 20 years, like, everybody can relate with that. Right? Yeah. And dude, when my wife was like, hey, we learned to live without you. Like, dude, like, I'm like, dude, screw you. I, I came from nothing. I'm successful. What are you talking about? The fact is, is there another level in me? Yes or no? Yes. And this woman's trying to bring it out and I'm pissed off. Mm -hmm. Dude, if someone believes in you, should you slap them in the face? Mm -hmm. You know, like if somebody believes in you, should you say, hey, there ain't no more, man. I'm maxed out. Back off. Or should you say, man, I've been waiting my whole life for someone to push me and believe in me. And see, that's all I do. All I tell people is that you're capable of way more. And all I do every day to myself is I wake up and I'm like looking for the holes in my game. Mm -hmm. So I'm all about consistency. I'm all about routines. And by the way, if I get thrown off of an, on a routine for any way, shape, or reason, I get back on lightning fast. I'm real careful who I have around me. Mm -hmm. um, you got to have a good mind. You got to have a good heart. That's super important. The heart's probably the most important thing around me. Um, I crave love. I crave it. I crave these chemicals when, I, when, I, when I'm being good to myself and I'm being good to people that our body releases like oxytocin, serotonin, dopamine rushes. I don't get them from social media. I get them from like helping other people. Mm. I love that shit, man. You know, these chemicals, like they run through yeah. your body, right? It's an unlimited supply of crack that your body gives you for being a good person and raising your standard. Mm. And so anyways, man, like I'm just like, I'm just running the play. We got a coaching company. You know, we just do sales and leadership. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, we have 500,000 individuals. We got 10,000 companies. Dude, our churn rate is nothing. I mean, 90% of last year, all of our clients stayed on 90%. Our churn rate is nothing. Um, you know, people are always going to give up on themselves at some point. Someone's going to talk them out of what they want. Mm -hmm. But dude, honestly, my number one goal is to brainwash the world. I want to wash their brain and I want to brainwash them to raise their standard, mm -hmm. create human excellence and be an example for everybody. And the deal is, is that they don't have to have money. Like anybody can go today and like change their mind. Like mm -hmm. you can just recreate and you can do it actually really quick. That's why I said, we're in an era right now where the, I said, the God of this generation is comfort. So everybody's so comfortable. So like, dude, it's easy to beat everybody. You know, you know, yeah. winners beat losers and legends beat winners. It's like, if you want to be great, like you, you go to be the legend mm -hmm. and I'm building legends like Tony Robbins. There was a, uh, a deal on uh, social, on uh, we, he had his big uh, training mm -hmm. with a, a couple million people, um, his big event, the Game Has Changed yep. event, right? Did you see that? Yeah, I did, yep. And he gave me a shout out. Mm -hmm. um, and he said, hey, Andy, you know, built this $100 million company, this thing. I remember when I was a W-2 employee and I quit my job and I bought the broker blueprint training for three grand. Mm. Uh, and, and I want to tell you how weak I was. After I took the training for 30 days, there was a 30 day money back guarantee. I asked my wife how to get my money back. And my wife goes, are you serious? 
And she goes, did you get three grand of value? And I go, yeah, but you know, like we can get our money back and I learned it. And she's like, do you know what karma is? And I'm like, yeah. She's like, do you, are you going to be the customer you want? Like when you go do what they taught you, mm -hmm. do you want everyone to, to charge back? You want cancellations? I'm like, no. She's like, don't be a piece of shit. Mm. I'm actually, for the first time in my life these last five years, I have a good core. For 39 years, I wanted to make money. I had the wrong intentions. And internally, my core wasn't that good. I was never around a good leader. So when my wife decided to be honest with me and say, your standards aren't really that great. You're really good at sales, Andy. You're really good at talking. You're a hard worker, but your core isn't as good as it can be. And you can get mad at me or you can get great. Mm. And I chose to get great. And I literally would tell you, that's why I said, why 39 years? I didn't want to face the truth. Yeah. Anytime that woman would say anything to me and I knew it was the truth, I would just get mad. I would say, why are you being an egg? Like, I'm doing this, but, you know, like, why, isn't that enough? It's like, dude, biggest cop-out excuse ever. And my wife was waiting for me to be great. And that's why she supports me now. Mm. That's why she, you know, she, and by the way, she became an, an animal because I became an animal. Mm. And that's the leader. That's the male in the house. When, when, when the man gets his shit together, the woman gets her shit together too. And I've seen Jackie have millions of breakthroughs. And so like, anyways, yeah. on, on, this, on this conversation, it's like, hey, dude, you're all made for greatness. And dude, all the shit that you've done wrong in your life, to me, you had to go through it to get you ready for what you're gonna go through now. I almost went to jail. I mean, honestly, like, dude, I almost went to yeah. jail. I almost lost everything. Almost losing everything made me realize how every how important everything was made me want to be a better person. Mm. Dude, you got to fuck someone over to know that you never want to fuck someone over again. You got to get fucked over to know that you getting yeah. fucked over hurts so that you don't want to do that to someone else. Dude, I'm one of the greatest leaders on planet Earth today because I was one of the worst leaders on planet Earth for, for so many years. But so like when we do these podcasts, we're actually sharing information with people how they can become the greatest leaders. Sure. That's it, man. Like it's not clout with us. It's like like people that, you know, walk up to you in an airport and go, dude, you changed my life. I watched that, that podcast, man. And that day I woke up and dude, they're, they're never the same again. Just like you, just like me. Yeah. Can people change on it? Like you talk about having it all, right? Uh -huh. Having it all mentally, spiritually, physically, emotionally, financially, having it all. Can you have it all if you're at ground zero? Like, like yeah. if you would have watched this podcast when you were 30 and you got the information that we're talking about today, right? Could you have changed at the age of 30? Yes. You could have. Yes. Listen, so I want to tell anybody that's watching this, if you're an underdog like me, if, if you have done things that you're ashamed of, maybe you feel like that, dude, people like me can't make it. You don't know what I did, Andy. You, hey, listen, listen, that's all bullshit, okay? Number one, you're immensely qualified to help other people overcome what you can overcome. Mm. So anything that you can overcome, dude, like to me, you're a coach in that area to help other people overcome that. Dude, do you want a preacher that literally was like five generations down of a preacher? None of them had sex till they got married. They never had a drink of alcohol, never went out and partied, never did anything. And yet they're telling you how to live. Or do you want a guy that literally screwed it all up, but then gave his life, changed everything. And now he understands when he's talking to you, I know exactly what you're going to. And that's the reason why you're going to do this. Yep. So you want that guy, right? 100%. And so I'm telling everybody, 95% of the world that's watching this are those people. Mm. Okay. And so like at 30 years old, Dude, honestly, like, I just needed someone to hit me in the mouth and be direct with me and be like, dude, you got one life. And nobody did. Yeah, like, well, remember, if you, okay, if you're a fat person, mm -hmm. and I'm not, I know people are, I can't believe you said fat. Shut your mouth. If you're an overweight person and you have a group of friends, okay, that know that you're overweight and they're letting you be overweight, they're shitty friends. Mm. But then I come along and I'm like, hey, you're overweight. You think maybe we should start eating clean so you could be more attractive for your husband, look in the mirror, be, be, be more proud of yourself, you know, maybe have more energy, right? Like, like have a better quality of life. Like later down the road, you don't have to pay for these things. Like take care of your health, which is the number one thing that's most important while you're alive is your health. And they're like, I can't believe you would say that to me. Okay, okay. 
get mad at me today, hang with those friends, and then one day the bad doctor's report's going to come, mm. and you're going to say, God, that guy was right. Mm. But now it's too late. And so, like, I'm running this message early that, like, if you're hanging around a group of losers, get away. Is that if you're not going to the gym, like, go to the gym. By the way, you don't have to open your own business. Mm -hmm. Listen, Austin, if your employers are, are, are watching this, they're intrapreneurs. Yep. Dude, become 100%. the greatest intrapreneurs on planet Earth and blow your shit up mm -hmm. by being great and become a leader. Yep. And people inside your company, the more value they bring, the better the leader that they become. Guess what? The more you're going to pay them. And the bigger the company grows. And then that's how life works. So you don't even have to be an entrepreneur. You could be an entrepreneur. You could be working for another company. And you don't have to quit your job. Everybody, I wouldn't have quit my job at 30. I would have just done my job differently. Mm. I would have started living my life differently then. Like, um, so anyways, man, it's like, it's like, dude, this is the secret. It truly is the secret. People are like, what's the business? It's like, bro, who you become determines what you get. Period. Period. End of story. Go take all the business classes you want. Go pay for every marketing course you want. If you're not going to be an attractive person that's literally going to become something that people walk by, I call it moral authority. Mm -hmm. Like, oh yeah, like that person is, that person's real. Like we talked about Bradley before. You're like, hey, he's real, man. There's nothing fake about him. He is who he is. He'll tell you who he is. It's moral authority, right? Like you understand. Moral authority is, is what I would tell you that when someone is just so sure of themselves, they're, they're not going to get, they're not going to sell out. They're not going to be persuaded to go do something else. If you're like, Hey Andy, let's go have a drink. We don't drink. Yeah. And you're like, come on, man. Isn't that fun? Dude, fucking my life is fun. I have so much fun. You have no idea, but I don't ever wake up hung over. I don't ever wake up tired. Never. People are like, never? I'm like, dude, I love my life. I wish I could delegate sleep. I swear on my life. I really do. I got three hours of sleep last night. People say that I aren't healthy. Do I look fucking healthy? Dude, I'm telling yeah. you, if, if you build this person, that life will get built. And by the way, when you build this person, you'll have hundreds of thousands of people that will say, hey, we're going to war with you. Let's go. Where do you want to go? Mm. And then when one of you go to war, we all go to war. That's how I've created this, this movement, man. That's, that's like just people like do it's, I'm called a ministry, man. I'm just telling yeah. you, but, but anyways, but I love business and I love making money. My intentions changed. I started to fall in love with the truth and, uh, dude, just life is like blown up. Like it's crazy. Yeah. And so anybody that I run into, I want to leave them better off than when I found them. Even if it's in a gas station, if it's anywhere, I will pep talk the shit out of anyone's ass. Anybody I run into, my number one goal is I'm like, I'm going to leave this person better and I found them. Mm. And dude, I give now. I give all the time. I give everything that I have. And the storehouse is just constantly filled. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, people say like, you know, you got to give, you got to, you, know, you don't have to do anything. You need to want to do this. Dude, when your heart becomes right, like I'm telling you, dude, you'll be surprised what all starts to change in your life. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, but, but I'm excited to do hard shit. You know, I think a lot of people right now, I talked about these chemicals, right, that we get when we do hard stuff and stuff that's difficult. Plus, winners live where quitters quit. So, like, if anybody wants to build anything big right now, just fall in love with doing difficult stuff. Mm -hmm. And by the way, hey, have a group of friends like us. Yeah. Super important, guys, if you're watching this video right now and you're like, Andy, I'm not built like that. Bullshit. Yes, you are. Right, Got to train. That's the way it works. Train or complain, it's your choice. Okay, every day I train the greatest in the world. You know what I mean? Are you ready to kick some ass and build your legacy and make history? If you are, in the description box below on this YouTube video, there's gonna be a link. You click on it, enter your phone number, email, full name, and I will personally reach out to you in the next 24 hours. If you're serious about kicking some ass, going to the new level, recreating, next version of yourself, I'm your guy. Let's kill it. Like, How do you do difficult stuff on a day-to-day how do you change? If you're somebody who just consistently takes the easy way out, you wake up, you're like, I can make my bed, but I'm not going to make it today. I'm in a hurry. Or, and it's just like little thing after little thing. How do you shift? Well, so, so if anybody wants to go buy this book, there's a book by Andy Frazella. It's mm -hmm. called The Book of Mental Toughness. Okay. And it's a really good book. He wrote it about six months ago. It was released. When you open the book of mental toughness, in the beginning of the book, he talks about the recipe for mm -hmm. mental toughness. And then there's this thing, and it says, You want me to show you a magic trick? And it says, 
I can tell you what your body fat percentage is. I can tell you what your relationships look like. I can tell you how much money you have in your bank. I can tell you how much you love yourself. I can tell you the way you view the world. I can tell you the way the world views you. Want to see a magic trick? Show me your last 500 days routine. Mm. Show it to me and I will tell you all of these things. And so what would I tell everyone right now? Just be consistent. Mm -hmm. Be consistent. Decide who do you want to be and also decide who you don't want to be. You know who I don't want to be? I don't want to be anything like my mom. Mm. I don't want to be anything like my dad. I don't want to be anything like a lot of, like a lot of people. So I know who I want to be. And so like, it's not always who do you want to be. It's also who don't you want to be, mm. you know, um, it's, it's who you're proven right. And it's also who you're proven wrong. Mm-hmm. It's also, are you running towards a life you want or are you running from a life you hate? Which one's more powerful between to the me, two? I'll ask everybody. They can decide on their own, but go back to any 90 day run that you've ever had in your life. Okay. And ask me which one was the best. And so I'll use you as an example and they can think about this. So Austin, Mm -hmm. I'd be like, Austin, man, dude, you're the best, bro. I believe in you. No one is better than you. You're a freaking badass, Mm -hmm. man. I've always believed in you. You're always going to be number one. You're the greatest. That's one way. Or how about this? Austin, you ain't going to fucking make it. Yeah. You're a loser, bro. I'm going to be honest with you. Nobody likes you. Nobody likes you. We don't want you around here. And you're going to get your ass kicked. Second one. You won't even be in in business Mm -hmm. this time next year. Which one makes you hungry? First one doesn't even motivate me. Okay. Second one, 100%. So I want to explain this to you. So the chip on the shoulder mentality is the way that I run. Remember I said I'm a broke person with money? Mm Mm-hmm. You could show me my bank account right now. And like when I was broke, I was delusional that my reality was I was going to be successful. So like I still feel the same as I did when I was broke. Mm. So the money doesn't, doesn't make me feel successful. Uh, flattery means nothing to me. Uh, you could walk in and, you know, I'm super humble. If you've met me, right? Like I said, I meet people. I never think I'm, I'm great. Um, I don't, if you tell me I'm great, it goes in this ear, out that ear, it's gone. Yep. Now, if my wife was to say, hey, babe, I'm really proud of you. Like, like that's different. Like, I really like that because, you know, she's different. If my company was to say, hey, Andy, you made a really good decision. We were talking about all these options and, you know, you said this one was a good one and, you know, good call with that one. That was good. I, I like that because it's, it was a strategy deal that we did. Yeah. But, 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 hey, you're great. You're the best. No ways. Mm-hmm. Listen. Laughing at me, a lot of people laugh at me. That's food for me. Mm. I need that. I'm in trouble the day that people stop hating on me because it motivates me. It, the psycho competitor doesn't operate when everybody's with me. The psycho, the, the, the coal to the locomotive that I keep putting in the train mm. to keep going is nothing but hate. And everybody's operated different. My wife, like I'm always like, I'm burning my haters' eyes out. And my wife's like, I don't even see my haters. Mm. Like, like, I don't even think about them. And I'm like, oh man, I, I love it. And she's like, I don't even think about it. She's operating completely different than I'm operating. But to tell you though, I pretend every day that someone's trying to put me out of business. Mm. I pretend every day, I pretend, which means I intentionally do this to myself, right? That someone is trying to, um, be my children's hero. So I know I need to step up and do a little extra today and make sure I bring good shit home to my family, to my wife and my kids. Yeah. You know, like, dude, I want my wife. My wife is a a woman. I'm a man. Are women sexual? Men are sexual. There's lots of men walking around. Hey dude, I can't change the way God made me. I can't get a, I can't look like Brad Pitt, but I can get in shape. I can take care of myself. I can keep my word. I can be good to other people. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can be loving to her. I can be infectionate. I can make sure I, I, I give her special energy, show her attention, but also fucking win and do all that shit. That makes me more attractive. I can, I know how to play the odds in my favor and I know, I know the hand I've been dealt. And by the way, I just want to say like, that's why I'm like the person that's the most dangerous person on the room is the one that has been through the most shit. Okay. It's like the, in the Bible, Saul became Paul. Yeah. Right. Christian killer. And he took the Bible the furthest. It's like, dude, like, I honestly think that some of us, like, like we had to go through this so that we could honestly do the best at it. Mm. And honestly, like, remember I told you the eyes, like if you, like, what's your favorite thing to watch? 
somebody that overcomes something that comes back really far, you know, like yeah. that's, it's not someone whose dad gave him a bunch of money and now they're doing great. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, dude, and, and, and we got grit, right? Like if you take us a hundred yards off a of shore and we don't know how to swim and you drop us off, we're going to find our way back to the shore. Yeah. It's going to be ugly if we don't know how to swim, mm -hmm. but we're going to get back to the shore. But you go drop someone of a hundred yards offshore without any grit, they're going to drown. Yeah. Okay. So that's what I call like that dog and you can call it whatever psycho competitor dog, you know, chip on the shoulder. Like, dude, like, um, I'm super loving, but I feel inside. I feel stirred up. I honestly feel like that tomorrow I may not be here. Mm -hmm. So I'm not fucking around anymore. Dude, when I die, I want them to play these videos where they go, he knew he was going. Mm. He knew he was going, man. And that's why he was, that's why he was given everything. Greg Plitt died in 2016, got, he, he got ran over by a train. He was doing the Nike commercial. He wanted his whole life to, to, to become great. Mm -hmm. And literally, um, unbelievable. He, uh, two days before he was doing the Nike commercial across the tracks, got ran over. Uh, he said, I feel like I'm 36 years old. He goes, I just feel like I'm running out of time. Mm. And like two, two days later, he died. Wow. And I remember watching that man. And I was like, I'm not going to let that slide. Mm. I'm not going to let that. I'm not going to pretend I didn't hear that. that. That shit really happened. Yeah. Dude, that shit can happen to us. And I'm telling you, dude, like I'm ready to die. Like I want to live every day like it's my last day. And, you know, I want to live it like it's my first day, mm -hmm. you know, like it's the first day you and your wife met, but also it's the last day you're going to be together. If today was the last day you and her were ever going to be together, how would you treat her? Absolutely phenomenal. Treat her that way every day. Mm -hmm. And you say, well, I am. Bullshit. That's the truth. See, that's the truth. And, and, and so I, I talk about my wife a lot, but dude, she's the one that honestly just keeps this truth cycle running. And I, honestly, I've become addicted to it. Mm. only because it's hard to hear it kills my ego but dude we grow i mean dude we'll do 250 million this year if we stay on track not even from a financial perspective tell me it's not fucking possible i am living proof i've been with you before mm -hmm. i'm here again i'm living proof you own the truth you start with honesty you recreate you understand you keep that chip on your shoulder. You be good to people. Mm -hmm. You change everyone's life. You become the greatest leader on planet earth. Self-leadership, lead others, then build leaders to build more leaders. Mm -hmm. You do those three things. You look around. You wait about two years. You look up. It's magic. You can't yeah. even believe it. And guess what, man? Nobody gets taken care of by good leaders like this anymore. These leaders don't exist. Mm -hmm. the, greatest, the greatest scarcity in this world is leadership. The greatest scarcity. And so if you want to make more money, what do you do? You increase your value. Mm -hmm. Well, what's the highest value right now? Leadership. So the greatest scarcity is leadership and the leadership is the greatest value. So if you want to make more money and you have a bigger life, become a leader. How do people become a leader if they're not, a, if they're not, if they don't think they're a leader? Well, step one, you got to self-lead. Mm -hmm. That's it. Like, look, Hey, how do you have self-confidence? How do you have self-belief? How do you have self-esteem? It's easy. Do what you say you're going to do. Yeah. Keep your promises. Yeah. But that, it, see, it's so See that? It's like, keep your promises. Mm -hmm. Dude, every day, everybody says they're going to do something. Yep. Am I right? Yep. And most of them don't do what they say they're going to do. And they say they're not going to do stuff. Yes. And they do it. Oh, yeah. Hey, by the way, I won't. I won't because I got ADD, so I won't get off. But I will tell you something. If I could literally give everybody a piece of advice, I would love to start adding skill mm -hmm. to people's lives and say, hey, let's skill stack this. Let's add some new stuff. But honestly taking away some things out of people's lives would truly be the way for them to three X. Mm. So I've got a coach and I want to teach him more skill. Right. And he's like, I want to three X my money. And I'm like, okay, we're not going to teach you anything. We're actually going to have you stop doing some things. Mm. He's like, what do you mean? And I go, well, number one, every day you're going to start going to the gym because you go three days now, but you're going to go five days now. And then also number two, you're going to start doing cardio three nights a week. You're going to walk for 30 minutes every night. So you're going to start doing a little bit of cardio because I want, and you're not going to run. You're going to walk. I want you to fast walk, walk the hills in Arizona, yeah. right? For 30 minutes. He started doing that. I go, dude, you eat like shit. There's Cheetos in your drawer every day. Mm. Open his drawer. There's Cheetos. I'm like, we're going to stop eating this junk and you're going to start eating clean for the next hundred days. 
within 100 days of him doing the cardio three nights a week, going to the gym five days a week, not eating junk food anymore, literally stop drinking all these energy drinks. He drinks a cup of coffee in the morning, drinks water through the day, drinks a gallon, do a gallon and a half. The guy's 3X his income. Mm. He stopped doing the bad shit. Yeah. And he 3X his money. I didn't even teach him anything. I just got him to stop. Yep. Hey, by the way, uh, he was also thinking negative thoughts. Mm. So like that was a problem, you know? And by the way, like you have a sales team. Yeah, you have a big company. Yeah, I do, team. Yeah. Um, instead of like role playing with your team in the morning, doing objections and shit like that, right? Like, like teams like should, like they think they need to do. Mm -hmm. Dude, you know what we do? I think, hey, Austin, let's just say you're one of my guys. I say, Austin, think about someone's life right now that you've changed, someone that you were able to help in the company. Think about one person. Do you, can, you put, can you put them in your mind? What was their name? Mm -hmm. Kevin. What did you do for Kevin? Well, Kevin was going to lose this. He had this problem. He couldn't come up with this money. But then, you know, we called him and we got in touch with him. And then we were able to solve that problem quick. And now we, he has no stress. His marriage is actually healthy now because that was hurting him. And now they're in a good place and they've been mm -hmm. able to move forward. Okay. Today, when you get stuck or you're having trouble, right, or you're getting rejected or you're having an issue, thank Kevin. Yeah. Don't think rebuttals. Thank Kevin. Thank Kevin. So we talk about testimonies every morning in our mm -hmm. meetings of all the people's lives that we changed. Bam, that's we it. Hit the phones. It's the antidote. Dude, they're on crack. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. I, I I couldn't agree more. When you talk about leadership, do you think everybody on the planet can be a phenomenal leader if they want to be? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, I'm gonna tell you, like I was watching this podcast one time and they were talking about it was somebody, Ed Milet was with this guy, and he was talking about that like only seven percent of people are made for entrepreneurship. Mm. I love you guys, but bullshit. Dude, if I can do it, if I can do it, yeah, anyone can do it. Why don't people do it? I mean, because I was listening to a video uh, of you actually talking about that the other day. You said everybody could be like me if they want. Everybody has it in them. Yeah. Everybody has that inner beast, the inner legend, the inner freaking guy or gal that just is it, it dominates everything that they do. Yet a lot of people don't. But why? But why? <laughs> Well, well, so like so it goes back to facing the truth. They're not willing to face the truth. Yeah. Well, number one, like there's where you're at, where you want to go. Mm -hmm. There's your why, like, why do I want to get mm -hmm. there? Right. And then there's what emotionally anchors you to your why. Mm. Do listen, man. When I was in seventh grade, I, 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 uh, I, we were, we were super poor. Right. And by the way, like this isn't a victim story, but I just want to tell you something that someone said to me that really freaking pissed me off. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I, uh, my buddy's mom, we, I wanted to go to the lake um, for a whole week with him. And my buddy's mom was like the antichrist. Number one, um, I was the poor kid. And, and so like I wore the same two pair of clothes every day. You know, parents know who the poor kid is. Yeah. You know, I didn't have a mom. My dad was never home. I was kind of raised by kids. I'm sure I didn't have the best morals of all the kids. You know what I'm saying? But I was just trying to, I was trying to, be, I mean, I was a kid, dude. But I was in seventh grade. And um, I was the kid that I would play with my friends. And then the, the, the parents would say, oh, it's time for everybody to go home. Mm -hmm. And then they would go and drop me off first. But then the next day, I would find out that my friend and their parents, they all went to eat after they dropped me off. Mm -hmm. So I got dropped off first. Mm -hmm. And so I knew that I wasn't wanted. Okay? But I want to tell you, like, I knew that. Like, I was like, dude, like, like I, I, I'm like, I'm not wanted. And I just remembered that one day I was going to do mm -hmm. something. So, so that, so that kind of pisses me off. So I still think about that today, right? Yeah. So I, I want to make sure that I don't ever make someone feel that way. The way I felt, I don't ever want anyone to feel that way, mm -hmm. which is why our company hugs, loves people, does all this crazy stuff, and, and, and we operate on a certain level. But I'm going to tell you really what happened, and this made me go crazy. And this is why when I found sales, it was my way out. So, so sales and leadership will make you rich. Yep. Okay. But you gotta, you gotta anchor it to some emotion. Everybody right now, there's a book that Patrick Bet David wrote. It was Choose Your Enemies Wisely. You need to find someone that said something to you that really was hurtful. Think about someone. What did they say? You know, hey, you're never gonna become anything without me. Maybe it was your mom. She's like, you know, I should have boarded you. So, and you're like, what? Like something that you're like, like you can't take back. Mm -hmm. Like, like I can't take back sentence. And you have to write it down on a piece of paper and then you need to write down their name. And dude, like, I think about this all day long, this one certain thing. This is crazy because we're all operating. Yeah. You're like, Andy, out of all the shit, <laughs> this is what you're thinking about? So watch this. I want to go down to the lake. I'm in seventh mm -hmm. grade. 
and you have to have $20 to go to the lake because the mom's like buying sandwich meat and bread and shit like that, right? But all my friends have $20. And I asked my dad, I'm like, dad, can I have $20 to go to the lake? My dad's like, hell no. We ain't got no money. We don't even have an air conditioner. He's like, I'm behind on my bills. So like, no ways. Yeah. So my, this mother hated me. This is the one that dropped me off all the time, right? And so I'm driving two hours away with his older brother driving us to go to the lake. So my, bu- my buddy's like, dude, you know if you don't have 20 bucks, like my mom isn't gonna let you come because they knew I didn't ever have money. And I go, no, 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 I, my, my dad gave me 20 bucks. Because I was like, dude, I'm not missing out on this, yeah. you know? And um, anyways, going back to the moral thing, like I'm just like, I, I gotta be there. So I lied and I, I, we drive down to the lake two hours. As soon as we get out of the car, we go to the front of this lake house. And the mom, as soon as we show up, goes, all right, Lance, $20. Did your dad give you your money? I'm not even playing, dude. We didn't even say hello. Yeah. And she's like, 20 bucks. Matt, do you got your 20 bucks? You know, Travis, do you got your $20? And she's going down to each kid. And I'm like, dude, this is going to get ugly quick because this mom hates me. Yeah. I ain't never done anything wrong. She just doesn't like me. I'm the poor kid in the group. And guess what happened, dude? She said the best thing that could ever happen. This is, so this is where the psycho competitor Mm -hmm. operates. So how can anyone become successful? You got to find something that you can anchor Mm -hmm. your freaking madness to. And then you just start growing. You start start changing and you start proving everyone wrong. I proved all these people wrong, but this is what she said. Um, because like, it's pretty fucking crazy. You could say this to a seventh grader. I was 12 years old, 13 years old. Um, she goes, Andy, I need your 20 bucks. Hmm. And I said, oh, uh, um, oh, I left it in the truck. She was like, cool, go to the truck. We'll wait. We'll wait. I'm like, dude, this is how this is going to go down. I can feel it. So I go to the truck, mess around for about 10 minutes. And she's like, you know, chop, chop, Andy. You got the money? I said, it must have blown out. Like, because I was in the back of the truck on the way. Like, I laid in the back of the truck because it was a truck bed. And she's like, must have blown out. She goes, how about this? You're poor. You don't have the money. And you're lying. I know you're lying. Your dad didn't give you any money because your dad doesn't have any money. She goes, you lied. You're not coming in our house. You're not coming in our house. This, this, this whole week, you're not coming in this house one time. Wow. You're not welcome. And I was like, what? And all my friends walked in the house. I literally slept on the porch all week. All week, I hung out with my friends and she would go outside and give them all sandwiches and food and she didn't give me nothing. And and I just remember the way that this lady treated me and I remember her intentionally making sure that she showed me that she was keeping her word that week and that I was not welcome. Over $20? I was just a kid, dude. I decided that week, those nights I slept on that Mm -hmm. porch, I decided... One day, I'm going to find my way out. One day, I'm going to find my way out. So now today, here I am. I'm 44 years old. In any time that I'm like wanting to stop, I just think about what that lady said. Yeah. You're poor. You're never going to become anything. You're not welcome. Get out of here. Now, my family's in a good place. Mm -hmm. If I die, my kids, kids, kids are taken care of. The greatest thing that happened was that lady was in my life. Mm. I literally need to write her a thank you letter. Have you ever found her? No, but I need to write her a thank you letter (laughs) and just say, thank you, I owe you. Yeah. Because like you created a monster. Mm. Greatest thing you ever did. Yeah. And guess what? Her kids, little spoiled brats on their third divorce, all those kids that had the money, Mm -hmm. they all became nothing. Yeah. And so that's why it's like I'm talking to people and I'm like, you've been through some shit? Oh my God. It's the best thing that could ever happen to you. Oh my God. Yeah. Send those people a thank you. You've been sexually abused. You've been through something crazy. Mm-hmm. You know, like, yeah. dude, like, that was a superpower. Are you kidding me? You're one of the most dangerous people on planet Earth now, mm-hmm. if you can change. And so that's why I think like these people have to get around the right circle mm-hmm. of people. And so when I found the internet in 2019, and I know it sounds crazy, but I started typing in, you know, Tony Robbins, I bought the training course. He gave me some new information. My mind started to shift. And I started to be like, dude, like, I don't want to, like, I don't want to let it, I don't, I don't want to let my wife down anymore. Mm-hmm. But then also, dude, I wasn't proud of me. I'm going to say one, I'm going to say one thing to add to that. I wasn't proud of me. Mm. Look, Austin, at the end of the day, no matter how much money you make, no matter what everyone thinks about you, what do you think about you? Yeah. And honestly, when I looked in the mirror, I was like, I don't freaking like me. Like, I don't, like, I don't like me. Like, I've tricked a lot of people. 
Mm-hmm. But I don't like me. And uh, I just wasn't okay with that no more. I really like me right now. You know? I mean, I just, I really like me. Like, I'm, I'm keeping my word. I'm doing what I say I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. I'm as good as I can possibly be to everyone around me. I'm just, I'm going as hard as I can. And I just, I'm learning that every day there's these new levels. Mm-hmm. And honestly, like, the devil can't fuck with us. Okay? No matter what he brings our way, we're like, dude, there's got to be some good in this. We're okay. Yeah. And I'm not afraid to go broke. I'm truly not. I'm just, I'm running from a life I hate. So I just don't ever want to be that person anymore that like was a piece of shit. Mm -hmm. The, you know, we talked a lot about, we talked in the last podcast and we just talked about it a lot right now. You talked about it a lot that really people that had a tough upbringing and a tough life and a rough life, whatever, however that might look, ultimately have an advantage when it comes to business and, and, and life in general, like in the, if they figure it out, right. And they recognize, well, they have grit. Yeah. They, they, yeah. They have grit. They have resilience. They can, they, you know, um, what would you say to somebody watching that maybe had a, a, just an easy walk in the park upbringing? Their parents had a lot of money. They played video games. They freaking life wasn't really that hard. Like they grew up, their parents are still married. Everything was just pretty dang good. You know, how did they get that edge? How did they get that freaking? Well, number one, out of 70% of the world is divorced. Mm -hmm. 70% of marriages get divorced. You need to go tell your parents, thank you. Mm -hmm. Like, like, dude, like, you need to go, like, become a badass because your family, like, was able to take good care of you. Mm -hmm. It's just the reverse effect. And by the way, people say that people that come from nothing, you know, like, like have a, a, an advantage. Well, I mean, not really. I mean, it, it's just the way that you see life. Yeah. I mean, look, dude, did your parents sacrifice and do all these things so that you could have a good life? Yeah. Okay. Don't be fucking disrespectful. Go show your parents who you can become. That's proven your family, right? That all the sacrifice was worth it. Mm-hmm. Don't be a piece of shit. So that's, that would be the reverse side of it. Yeah. But Is we just, like, but we talked about a minute ago, on average, when we look at, you know, most people are broken. Most people that make it are came from broken stuff, right? So yeah. It, well, well, you either suffer as a kid mm-hmm. and then you kill it as an adult. Yep. Or you have it easy as a kid and then you suffer as an adult. Yeah. And like, you know, like, dude, I've been disappointed yeah. my whole life. So <laughs> when something don't happen now, I'm like, <laughs> like it's not like it's not anything new. I'm not like, oh yeah. my God, how am I gonna take this? I'm like, dude, are you kidding me? So it's nothing. Yeah, it's nothing, man. And you know what I love? Dude, and I know this sounds crazy, mm-hmm. but if you're with somebody, like I love that like my wife is like proud of this mm-hmm. guy that I'm becoming. So she's like, she's like good with anything. Like yeah. we've outgrown. I mean, dude, I, we've got Ferraris and Lambos and houses and all this shit. And the greatest thing still ever is when my wife says like, I'm proud of you. Mm. Like when my team or somebody's like, hey, you changed my life. Like that's that's the good shit. And everybody can do that right now. Mm-hmm. It doesn't, you can start becoming a leader and and start working on yourself right now. And like, you don't need any money. And someone will see you change and they're going to get inspired and you have changed their life. Mm-hmm. And you need no money for that. What's and that be- compound is big. Yeah. What's the best sales advice you've ever gotten in your entire life? Because sales is everything. You talk about yeah. it, right? You just talked about it. I mean, sales and leadership, obviously. You you know, I yeah, mean, sales, really. Sales is my game. It's everything. I mean, and that's what you're phenomenal at, right? Yeah, so sales is like, is sales is helping people make a decision to help themselves. Mm-hmm. So if anybody wants to take notes, like sales is helping people make a decision to help themselves. What do we do? We help people make a decision that they already want to make or we wouldn't have their information. Am I right? Yeah. And if we're reaching out to someone, what do we need to do? If we've never talked to them before, like great advice for sales, speak to people with familiarity. Speak to people like you've known them your whole life. First time I ever met you, was it like, hey, Austin, how are you doing? I'm Andy. No, dude, yeah. I talked to you like I've known your whole life with your wife. I'm like, what's up, girl? What are we yeah. doing? It's like, we don't hang out every day, but we can talk to each other like we hang out every day. Mm-hmm. Speak with familiarity. People say you got to build a rapport to pull the wall down. No, you talk to people like you've known them your whole life. The wall comes down naturally. Mm. It's like common sense. Like people overthink shit. People are like, you got you to have tonality. You got to have body language. You got to learn word tracks. No, you, knew, you know what? That's great. But you know what you got to do? You got to be a good person. Mm. Dude, moral authority. Are you taking care of yourself? You can't give someone what you don't have. You can't ask someone to be something you're not. 
Dude, listen, are you a decisive person? Do you make decisions? Do you want your clients to make decisions? If you're not making decisions and you're not a decisive person, your, your customers aren't gonna be decisive customers. Mm -hmm. You're a fraud, bro. Okay, so like become a real person, become great. And another deal, great sales advice here. Most people have been speaking since they're one years old. Mm. I talk to people that are 25 years old now. They don't know how to communicate. They don't know how to look someone in the eyes. They can't even shake a hand. It's insane. You don't speak. You don't speak with passion. You don't look like you care. You don't look like you care about me. Mm -hmm. you, you know the product knowledge. I don't give a shit about product knowledge. What do you think about me? Do you make pe people feel important? Do you make them feel significant? When you talk to people, do you make relationships other people can't make? Mm -hmm. Do you stand out? Are you different? Like, great sales advice. Yeah. You said uh, there was a video I watched uh, where you were given a piece of sales advice. And you said that you're doing your customer a disservice yeah. by not closing them because they need what it is that you're trying to sell. Can yeah. you elaborate on that? Well, number one, look, do you believe that you've got a good business? Yes, or 100%. No? Okay, cool. Yep. Good product? Phenomenal. You've seen it help people? Yep. You're sure? Positive. Okay, cool. It's a disservice to your customers when they're talking to you on the phone if you don't help them get your product or mm -hmm. if you don't guarantee and ensure that they end up with your product. Number one, because they'll keep struggling. Number two, they'll stay the same. And number three, they could end up with the competition, which is even worse, and they probably won't take care of them. Mm. Don't be disrespectful, okay? Make sure they close. Yeah. And how do you do that? Well, number one, you got to have a belief. The greatest thing that any salesperson can have is a true belief that what they're doing is the greatest. Dude, listen, you can hand out leads to your people all day long, mm -hmm. and the people that believe that these are the greatest leads ever, those are the people that make the greatest calls. By the way, when you call those leads, you're helping them with something. So what do you think about your product, your company, what it does? When you're talking to someone and you really believe that what you have can help them, dude, I'm going to tell you this. People buy. Yeah. They do it. Even if they weren't planning on doing it, they'll make an exception just because you believe that much. And by the way, great sales tip. Whoever cares about the client the most wins. Okay, mm -hmm. you got to care about your client more than they care about themselves. Whoever cares about the customer the most wins. So do you care about the client more than they care about themselves? Or does mm -hmm. the client care about themselves more than you care about them? Yeah. Bro, listen, if I talk to you, if me and you're on a phone call, if we're face to face, you're going to know that I care about you more than you care about yourself. And by the way, like great closes that you can say are things like, let's play this out. Like Austin, like yeah. you have this thing, you've been wanting to get this, this deal. I'm sure I'm not the first person that you've talked to about it, right? Yeah. If I am, I'm like, okay, we won the lottery together. But I'm guessing at some point before you've wanted to try to fix this, you talked to somebody. Obviously, that didn't happen because you still have the problem. We wouldn't be in contact with each other if you didn't think that I could fix this and we know that we can. Okay, so let's play this out. Let's say we don't do anything today. What happens? You struggle, you stay the same, nothing changes. Let's play this out. Let's say you do do this. On the other side of this decision, on the other side of this decision you're about to make, in six months from now, your life looks like this. And I would paint that picture with that life. Yeah. life. And I said, do you want that life? Good, let's go. The only regret you'll have is you didn't do this 18 months ago. Mm. Yeah, it's super powerful. Yeah. Dude, listen, sales mm. will make you rich. But just do me a favor because we're talking about sales. I want you to do me a favor. Don't learn sales and then think, then think oh, well, then I'm going to be a manager one day. So then I need to learn leadership. Mm. No, dumbass. Mm -hmm. Leadership is a skill of influence. Leadership is not a position. Mm. Leadership is the skill of influence. And what do you need to sell? How do you sell? Yeah. With influence and persuasion. So you need to become a leader first, which means get in the gym, take care of yourself, keep your word, have moral authority, right? Love yourself. How the hell can you love anyone else if you don't love yourself? That's why I see a lot of people, they're in sales offices and they're negative, right? Right. And they're like, I need to find a good deal. Dude, even if you find the right deal, you'd fuck it up yeah. because you're not on fire. Dude, if, if you were me and you're like, dude, give me the phone. Where are they at? Give me the phone. Where are they at? Put me in touch. Where are they at? I'll close anyone. Yeah. I don't care what's going on. I'll shut them down. Why? Because I love me. And since I love me, anybody I talk to, they're like, shit, dude, I don't know what this guy's selling, but I want a piece. Mm-hmm. If I could just bottle up this guy's energy, the way that he feels, his attitude, his his vibe, the environment that he's in, obviously, whatever this thing is, I'd buy that. So sure, I'll buy whatever you got. Most of the time, dude, I won't even sell someone something. I'll just pep talk their ass for five minutes. And they're like, dude, I don't care what it is. I want to be around you. I want to do what yeah. you want to do. And, and, and I'm, I say that jokingly, but like, my point is you got to have conversations like that. Yeah. And so like, no one does. People are trying to sell products. And guess what? Products are a commodity. Mm -hmm. 
And if your product, someone else has that same product, it's going to be a race to the bottom unless you're different than everyone else. Yeah. Period. You say a lot of controversial stuff according to the world. But when I listen to you talk, I hear a lot of truth. Mm -hmm. So why do you think the world thinks of it as controversial? Because they don't want to hear the truth. Mm. Listen, if you were going out and drinking and I told you to stop drinking because I think that you could do, I think you could do more in revenue and business. And I think, you know how you're going to the gym, right? Yeah. Yeah, cool. Hey, what if I told you that you would have way better results if you stopped drinking altogether and give it up because your body would actually respond better because you wouldn't be drinking and, and keep restarting, mm-hmm. right? Would that be negative of me? No. No, but if truth. I tell you to stop drinking, guess what? People are like, who are you to tell me what to do? Ego and pride. Uh, yeah, how old are you? I'm 29. Yeah, yeah, I'm 29 years old, bro. I got my own business, okay? I'm pretty freaking successful, and here you are telling me I can't have a drink. I think I've earned a drink. Whoa, okay? Mm. My bad. Yep. Looks like someone's maxed out. Yeah. Looks like someone doesn't want to grow, okay? I ask people all the time. I say, hey, let me ask you a question, Austin. Where do you think you are right now? Scale one to 10. Mm-hmm. One being the worst, 10 being the best. People, people say, say? People say, I'm an eight. I'm a nine. Okay, cool. So you're pretty much maxed out. You don't really have any more room to grow. Is that what you're saying? Mm. They're like, no, dude, I got a lot of room to go. Oh, so you're not maxed out. So you're saying you're like a two. Your two may be better than someone else's 10, but you're a two compared to your 10. Is that right? Sure, yeah. Cool. Number one, I just closed you your two. A minute ago, you said you were nine. So it just shows you how good I am at closing. I framed the whole thing. Mm. But number two, it shows you that people think they're an eight or a nine when really I'm a one. If you were to ask me, Andy, where are you at one to 10? I'm a one. And when I hit my 10, I'm taking over the whole world. Yeah. So like, I'm a one. Like, I got so much to learn. Everyone that I talk to, I got something to learn. Everyone that I run into has something to teach me. Everywhere I go, do listen, I think God made people in this world that aren't going to be successful so they can show us if we don't get our shit together, what that's going to look like. Mm. Let me say that again. There's people that I believe are in this world that aren't going to listen to the truth. They're going to stay the same. And those people are an example for me to look at daily so I can remind myself what will happen the minute I decide to be undisciplined, break my routine, and not keep my word to myself Mm -hmm. and lower my standards. So I'm thankful that there's people like that. I just don't want to be one. And I used to be one. Yeah. The one to 10 thing is interesting it's correct me if I'm wrong is basically humility versus ego and pride. Ego is the death of everything. Mm -hmm. Yep. Ego is the death of a marriage. Ego is the death of, um, look, you got guys out here in your company. One of them could mess up today. They could do something that costs a hundred grand. Yeah. And you go out there. They're, they're one of your top guys. They love you. They didn't mean to do anything wrong. You go out there. The end of your fate is at the end of your anger. You run out there and you're like, hey, dude, what the hell, man? What's going on? All of a sudden, this guy was loyal to you. He saw that when he made a mistake, you don't have any grace on him. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know, like, and then what happens? Resentment creeps in. He's like, dude, I don't like Austin no more. I can't believe that. I didn't mean to do that. You know that my heart's good. I didn't mean to make that happen. But you go and you say something really out of, out of line. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And that's what people do when they're mad. They say, they say, they, they say shit they can't take back. And, uh, you know, it's like a husband and wife when they say the divorce word, Mm. right? Like, babe, listen, I don't ever want to get a divorce. The fuck did you say? Yeah. Why'd you even bring it up? Like, like when that happens, Mm -hmm. that relationship will never be the same. Yep. It'll never be the same. If you were to say to that employee, listen, if you want to always work here, like, oh, like there's a day that, see, you wanted me to be loyal to you forever. And you're going to make mistakes and you're going to screw up decisions in this company and things are going to change here, but I'm going to need to show you grace, but you won't show me any when I mess up. Do listen, man, there's this thing that's like, I call like the standard that you raise in yourself that allows you to just, you know, like understand why yeah. people burn their businesses to the ground. Dude, I'm watching people burn their marriages to the ground. Dude, I'm watching people burn themselves to the ground. I've li- we've literally just told everybody the blueprint how to not burn yourself to the ground. 100%. No question. And, and by the way, if you do what we say, I don't know how the next dot aligns, whether it's the business you're in right now, like it's going to ex- explode. But I know if you become this person that we've talked about this whole time on this podcast, someone will walk up and put their hand out and shake your hand and they're going to freaking need you to be with them and that thing is going to be really big. Mm. 
Don't look at your situation now and go, well, how if I do this, can my situation be better? No, how about when I become me, mm-hmm. the situation gets better. That's yeah. why I say like, bro, like Jim Rohn, which is Tony Robbins' mentor, like he always says like, don't wish it was easier, wish you were better. Mm-hmm. Like, like in the Bible, it says the old is gone, the new has come. Like, dude, like we're so stupid. Mm-hmm. It's not a strategy. Now, when you start to become like elite, and you start to keep your word and you start to do all these things right and you raise your standards, now you add strategies in and holy shit, bro, you're blown up. And I think that's why we're blown up so big yeah. because honestly, I had to become who I needed to become for all these strategies that I was learning to actually even really manifest. You think that's also the key to building culture? Bro, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, dude, listen, man, if you're not who you tell me I can become, I don't believe I can become it. Right. And by the way, Leaders don't live by double standards. You know who builds an environment? A leader. Yep. Yeah. So I, I'm all about human capital. I'm all about people. There's inventory, there's marketing, there's buildings, but then there's people. Mm-hmm. Dude, I'm in the people space. I build people. That's all I build. I, I, I don't know about anything about marketing, okay? I mean, maybe we're okay at it. I really don't even talk about it a lot. I don't, I don't have any inventory. I sell knowledge. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I'm telling you, I'm in the people deal. And your mind is your greatest weapon and it's a piece of real estate and, and you're the gatekeeper. Mm-hmm. And like you have the opportunity right now to delete everything in your head and become a new person or you can stay the same. Yeah. And by the way, oh, this is an important one because I don't know where we're at on time, but I want to say something. Never unchange. Never unchange. That's, that's the secret. Mm-hmm. So anybody that's watching this, they're like, oh, I'm going to change. I'm going to tell you how I believe that I've continued to scale is, is Austin. I never changed back. So like, we have to note that. Yep. Like I never changed back. I never went back. Most people change, but then they stop and they change back. My superpower is I never change back. Mm. So I think anybody that's learning anything right now is that what I'm going to tell you is never change back. Once you kill off the old you, that, that you is not allowed to come back anymore. Yeah. Super important, guys. If you're watching this video right now and you're like, Andy, I'm not built like that. Bullshit. Yes, you are. Okay, you got to train. That's the way it works. Train or complain. It's your choice. Okay, every day I train the greatest in the world. You know what I mean? Are you ready to kick some ass and build your legacy and make history? If you are, in the description box below on this YouTube video, there's going to be a little link. You click on it, enter your phone number, email, full name, and I will personally reach out to you in the next 24 hours. If you're serious about kicking some ass, going to the new level, recreating next version of yourself, I'm your guy. Let's kill it. You said in a video that, because you were talking about this a minute ago, um, about relationships mm-hmm. and people, right? And you and I watched a video where you said relationships are the new currency. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, do you believe, because I believe, that relationships are the key to everything in life, no matter Actually. what? I mean, if you're a dentist, real, you know, like you, like relationships are the key to everything. Are they or are they not? Yeah, I mean, do listen. In the, in existence, we were we've we outlived the saber tooth tiger because we ran as a herd, mm. and we we stayed together, right? You know, if you want, if a lion wants to pick off four, I'm just giving an example, pick off four bulls. But if all the bulls are backed in and horns out, the lion can't get in because you get the horns if you come in on the four bulls. But if one of the bulls roams off, the lion will go pick it off and then all of them get picked off one by one. So relationships build an environment, build a culture, build a company, build a team. That could be a form of a relationship. But then also, if you want to talk about from a financial standpoint or an economic standpoint, relationships, they're how you get money. How do you get money from people? And how do people give money? By relationships. Dude, we're in an era right now where people are sick of transactional stuff. Mm -hmm. So if you're not going to be a real person and really going to care and you're not going to build relationships, number one, you're not going to be, you're going to be irrelevant. Like companies like ours will just, you don't even exist. Yeah. You're picking up crumbs. How many companies do you own right now? I don't know. You'd have to ask my wife. Yeah, roughly. But I don't know, like one, I mean the Elliott group, but like we have all these entities and these partnerships and these things that we do but how do you do it all like like practically every day like delegation wise like how do you how do you do it all not worry and not stress out my team yeah my team dude dude i know that you need to come down to the office Mm -hmm. and you need to see our team that we have now because my team has grown so large okay no i have no turnover on my team i've had three people quit over five years 
And, and when any of those people quit, we gained my last guy that quit, which was like nine months ago. I had one guy quit. I gained, we, we went up an additional million dollars the month that he left. Wow. What did that mean? That means it was just actually a problem. And it was probably my fault because I'm so loyal to people that he was probably a problem. And I didn't, I didn't want to admit it. Um, and actually when the guy left, everybody came up to me and they're like, dude, he was a problem. And I was like, well, why didn't they tell me? Mm. And they were like, well, because we didn't want to be negative. I'm like, fuck, you know, it's like, it's like, we have such a great culture though, that like, you know, that that's a problem. But anyways, I just want to tell you that yeah. I, I think that, um, building the environment, building the team, um, to me, like that, that's what every company's missing, man. Mm -hmm. Like, dude, like a cultures like ours don't exist. You have one. I went in there. I see mm -hmm. your people love you, dude. Listen, I'm gonna tell you one thing. When I walked into your company, everybody loves you. Mm -hmm. Everybody loves your life, your wife. And it doesn't feel like a company or it feels like a, a, a family. Mm -hmm. It felt like everybody was having dinner at the kitchen table, but they're actually making phone calls. Yep. Pretty cool stuff. It is pretty cool. Yeah. And it took me a long time to figure it out. Hell yeah, it did. I, I but now that you figured it yeah. out, you'll never have employees again. You'll uh -huh. have family. Yep. And people will say, dude, you can't get that close to people. Mm. Okay. Well, my point is, yes, you can. Yep. Okay. And, and another deal is, but you asked me, how do we delegate? Mm -hmm. I just build leaders. Yeah. Remember I said, there's three levels to leadership. I said, self-leadership was one. And then the second one is once you lead yourself, others will want to be led by you. So that was two. Then you become mm -hmm. a leader. So you can actually lead someone else. Sure. And then step three was making leaders that build more leaders. So every day, Danny comes into work, using him as an example, and he is a leader that I've built, and he's building all these other leaders inside the company. Right, and it's the only way to scale. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. I want to just a couple more things, and then we'll, we'll wrap up. Okay. Um, talking about relationships, like if somebody's watching right now, and they're not where they want to be in their monogamous relationship with their wife, with their husband, with their girlfriend, their boyfriend, what are a couple of practical things that they could do today mm -hmm. to, to start to get that relationship to go the other direction? Super simple. Number one, if you treat something like it's the beginning, there'll never be an end. Mm. Go back to day one. You don't need to go to marriage counseling. Just start treating each other like you did the first day you met each other. That number one solves everything. Number two, fight fair. Okay, don't ever mm -hmm. cut each other off. Let the other person finish. Try to understand what they're saying and then, and then talk. And then um, stay pure. Mm. Don't cheat on each other. Somebody's always going to offer someone better something else, somewhere else. Just like a company, just like a husband, just like a wife. Okay, you're in this till death. I mean, if you love that person, that's just how you do it. Um, and then I'm gonna say one more thing. Don't get historical. Mm. Give someone the opportunity to change if you really wanna be with them. Just giving you an example. If somebody's done something in the past and every time you fight, you bring it back up, you didn't forgive that person. Mm -hmm. And so like, you, you go around, you say, I wish my husband would be a better man. Well, every time he makes a mistake, you remind him how shitty he is. Like, you, you're not even letting him believe that he can change. Mm -hmm. You're just reminding him who you don't want him to be. Do the greatest thing with Jackie, she just, she just doesn't bring up the past. Yeah. Like, I've always, like, she just, it doesn't matter what I do. She's just like, we're done. Like, that's gone. Like, forgive or hate each other. Mm-hmm. And you have to do it with your wife to do the husband. So we don't, when we're fighting, we fight about what we're fighting about. And then we fight quickly. And then also one more little piece of advice. Um, we, we don't hang on to the fight. If you come and talk to me and Jackie or anyone in my company after we fight for five minutes, guess what we do? We act like we've done any fight. Yeah. Like, like you walk up to me and Jackie after a blow up fight for five minutes. And like, we're like, what fight? Mm-hmm. Like, we just needed to handle that, and it's done. I don't want to fight with her. I don't want to hurt her. And by the way, real love is giving to someone the power to destroy you or hurt you, but knowing that they wouldn't. Mm. Real love is your wife giving you the power to hurt her, but knowing that you wouldn't do it. That's powerful. That's what real love is. Yeah. You get hundreds of millions of views a month on the internet. I know you probably don't. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. But you say you don't have social media on your phone. See, I can't imagine you. Well, read I just every... don't want the notifications. Right. It's on. I have social media. Yeah. It's on a computer, and I could go see it if I wanted to see it on a computer. Mm -hmm. But like, I I create the content, and my team builds it. I I see it. I just I don't want to watch the yeah the numbers. I don't want to watch the the stuff. I I know what we're doing. My question for you is: What is the most frequent comment that you get on all of your social media? Um. 
why are your shorts so short? So take your <laughs> wife's shorts off. <laughs> hey, yeah. they say, take your wife's shorts off, like number one, yeah. okay? And do listen to me. I told you before I came in here, we had a conversation. I mm -hmm. said, I would be happy to be naked all the time. I mean, honestly, like I, I just, I, I, I don't wear shoes a lot. I mm -hmm. don't wear a shirt a lot. I'm not trying to be anyone else, okay? I literally love sun. I love being outside. I run around. Like, dude, if you go to my office right now, I have 100 guys outside on the phone, and, and they're all got their shirts off making calls, having a kick-ass time. Yeah. Like, dude, I'm not trying to model anyone else's business, okay? And if people are like, I don't like that, well, it's working. Mm -hmm. So I'm sorry you don't like it. So number one comment would be like, I mean, people say like, like, why are you being so mean? Yeah. Right. But I understand. Look, hey, when you tell the truth, people, when my wife said she learned to live without me, you know, like she was telling me that I was not present at home when I was working 12 hours a day and coming home. And then I wasn't paying attention to her. Like it was fair for her to tell me, but like immediately I was trying to hang her on the fact that I was better than most men. So she should have to put up with that. And when she gave me her life and married me, I promised her the right of a lifetime. I wasn't keeping my word. She checked me. I had to get over my ego. And then I changed to become a better man. Thank God she told me the truth. And so people are like, why are you so mean? And then like, why are you wearing your wife's shorts? Yeah. And you, but it's great marketing. Yeah. Do listen, six packer, you're fired. Yeah. We were on every news station in the world, every news station. Mm-hmm. Thousands of articles, New York Times. We we're everywhere. Six pack, you're fired. By the way, it's yeah. just called a standard. And it's, you don't have to have a six pack. It's just six pack mentality. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm going to be elite. And that's the mentality. Yeah. So yeah, it, it was good marketing. Back to your wife thing real quick. I just, I want to ask a question because we got a lot of, we got, the last time we did an interview in total, we probably got 25 <laughs> or 30 million views. We had a lot of comments that when when you tell the story about your wife came, she grabbed your love handle. Uh -huh. She told you you're not you're not here, you're not present, right? A lot of people uh, commented saying, essentially the comment was something to the effect of, it, you know, was she being ungrateful? Oh right? no! What would you have to say to those people? Dude, listen, though? how about this? My wife married me, and she saw that I was going to become this great man. Mm -hmm. My wife can either keep her mouth shut and let me just become who I'm going to become. Or my wife can hold me accountable to the man that I committed to be. Mm. Which one, which one do we want her to do? Listen, I'm going to tell you something right now. Okay. If every time I'm going to use my wife as an example, but you could use it as your best friend or anybody. If my wife saw that I was doing something that wasn't right, should she tell me? Mm -hmm. Well, every time if she told me and I told her to shut up, why are you nagging me? Eventually one day she would, Stop telling me. And then one day when I got in trouble, I would say, why didn't you tell me? And she said, well, I knew you were doing that wrong. Well, every time I tell you, you tell me to shut up. So you made me shut my mouth. So you basically took the person that if you were to get sick, this would be the person that would be taking care of you in your life mm -hmm. and no one else would be around. Um, and you told them to shut their mouth. And then also your best friend, it's not really your best friend because you told your best friend would protect you. Mm. Your best friend would hold you accountable. It shows that you and your wife aren't, aren't best friends. And basically, me and my wife, I had, I had accidentally made us become fam partners like mm. most marriages. We were sleeping in the same bed. We were miles apart. We were making a lot of money. She had a purse full of cash, paid off cars, mm. hold hands at church. And uh, it was like 1% of what we could have been. Mm -hmm. She opened her mouth, thank God, and I was receptive that day. I got mad, I got angry, and then I just said, all right, cool. You know what? You're right. I am. By the way, wouldn't it be stupid for me saying, you know, this is the best I can be? No, I said, you're right. I am capable of being more. Mm -hmm. And matter of fact, when she grabbed my love handle, I said, any time that I ever kicked the most ass, I was in the best shape. Mm. Any time that I treated her really good, when we had the most sex, when I made the most money, all those things were when I was in the greatest shape. Mm -hmm. So you knew it was true. Yeah, it's just true. And, and, and dude, like I had to dig myself out of a hole. So mm -hmm. guess what I did? I went to war. I started working on myself. Total recreation, self-development, which is what we talked about the whole time. And dude, today, like I'm 44, I feel like I'm 18 years old. I have everything that I've ever wanted. And guess what? She still holds me accountable daily and she loves the shit out of me. And guess what? Remember, she doesn't hang me when I make a mistake. Mm -hmm. 
okay? She beats my ass when I lower my standards. And so that's what this whole conversation has been about. We've had the whole time with standards. Yeah, yeah, it has nothing to do with not making mistakes, right? No, make mistakes all you want. Yeah. She's just saying that when I am this way, Mm -hmm. I've always performed higher. I've always gotten more, and I was also happier. In every great relationship that I've ever seen, the two, they they hold each other accountable. Yeah, but 99% of relationships don't do what we're talking about. No. But they can. And if they understand this, they've just become the most dangerous people on planet Earth. Mm. Yeah, it's so powerful. Uh, last question for you. How important is your relationship with God now in your life, your family, your your culture? You know, you, you go to church, you bring mm-hmm. your team to church, right? Like, how important is that? Everything. Everything. Everything that we talk about in our company every day is all God. Mm. And by the way, like, I'm not going to beat people over the head with with God, but I'm going to tell everyone. Literally, God gave me another chance Mm -hmm. and another one and another one and another one and another one and another one. And he just came for the sick. He came for the lost. He didn't come here for the Jesus, didn't come for the righteous. He came for the lost. And that's why I keep saying that, like, dude, like, you're all qualified. And, you know, a lot of people, like, you don't have to really know the Bible. But if if I was to tell you something about God, is in the Bible, it says the devil's like a roaring lion Mm -hmm. trying to devour you, right? And I believe that. Mm -hmm. And I believe that, like, the devil assigns demons to people, and he's like, hey, go make that guy stay average. You don't even have to ruin Austin's life. Just keep don't let him... Don't let him get crazy. Like, don't let him, don't let him get closer to his wife. Keep this conversation they had on this podcast. Keep him to be like, hey man, we're doing better than most. That's a good place for him. If if you don't have to ruin his life, just keep him average. Keep mm-hmm. him comfortable. No ways. No, so the devil's like a roaring lion trying to devour you. Mm-hmm. And if you're suffering and if you're going through stuff, God's almighty hand will always lift you up. You just got to get around good people. Iron sharpens iron. You got to plug into good information. And guess what? You know, God is love. Mm-hmm. And so, like, you you can't hate people and love people at the same time. Like, I, I operate in love. Mm-hmm. That's it. Like, everything we do is love. And so, anyways, God's love. And so, yeah, but God's everything. He's number one, man. And I would just tell everybody that if you want peace in your life, it's God. Yeah. You know, you can cast all your anxieties on him. You can give him everything you have and he'll take it. And he does that with me. And that's how we keep growing and we keep, we keep operating. He doesn't promise us we're not going to have any problems. We get to, we're entrepreneurs. We get to solve problems. You know, I, I, dude, I screw up all the time. You know what entrepreneurship is? The ability to unfuck yourself when you fuck up. <laughs> yeah. That's just truly entrepreneurship. And so if anybody wants to be a great entrepreneur, like you want to solve problems, like if you can unscrew yourself, you can unscrew anybody and you'll build something beautiful. Mm. That's so true. I've never heard it put like that. Yeah. Yeah. Truly incredible. If you had a billboard ask you the last time and 7.8 billion people could see what you put on that billboard, like one message, like one thing that you think everybody should know that you've learned, what would that be? I mean, dude, I would put from today forward, Mm. like from this day forward, which means like, like, well, if, if, if you could restart your life, Mm -hmm. who would you become? What would you look like? Patrick McDavid talks about this future true thing. He's like, if you could be anybody, if you could look like anybody, if you could have a marriage like anybody, if you could have a business like anybody, if you could behave like anybody, if you could have a routine like anybody, what would it be? And he's like, cool, create a vision board, become that person now. Now, you got to believe you're that person. You got to be delusional. You got to believe that person. Mm -hmm. And you're going to tell yourself a lie, which I'm giving you permission to lie. You said, Andy, I can't believe you're telling me to lie. No, no, no. I'll give you permission to tell this lie. Believe that you're that person today, now, and soon you won't be lying anymore. And you'll be that. And that's what I did. Mm. I told myself a big lie that I was going to do all of these things that I'm doing right now. And I'm doing it. And I'm doing even more than I thought I could do. And so I would say, if there's a billboard, I would say from today forward. Mm. That's it. From this day forward. So like, let's go. So powerful. Yeah. I just watched the video and then we'll wrap. Uh, of you on your Instagram of you 10 years ago. You, or you, your team posted the video. Yeah. It's you with a couple guys like out in a backyard somewhere. A little skinny right? guy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you were, uh, you were saying that you were going to achieve everything that you've achieved today, mm-hmm. right? And I'm sure at that time, 
you were lying to yourself. I was like, in my in, backyard in, in front in, of some monkey bars. Yeah, I, yeah, that was the video. Yeah. But yeah. look at what happened. So yeah. you just proved that that's 100% true. It'll work for anybody. Yeah, anybody. If they do it. Yep. And mm -hmm. that's it. This whole podcast, I'd watch it a thousand times. Yeah. A thousand times until you become. I, I'm a person when I watch something, if it really affects me, I'll watch it a thousand times. For sure. I and, fall asleep to it. Yeah, until I memorize it. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Hopefully where can people where can people get a hold of you if they want to come work with you, work for you, you know, any any type of Well, there's two ways. I mean, you can always message me on social media, but there's one easy direct way. People can text me. It's very simple. Like they can text. Doesn't matter who they are, whatever's going on, right? No dick pics. I'm just kidding. Yeah. I was just joking because we get naked pictures all the time. <laughs> it's the world. So don't give your cell phone out on the internet, but we do. Yeah. Jokingly. Um but seriously, yeah. but 918-210-0254. So I've had this number for forever and it's 918-210-0254. Cool. And people just, they're like, Hey, I want to get a hold of you or I want to do this thing or I have a team or I want to recreate, you know, um, we have couples masterminds. Mm -hmm. We do them each year. Like I want to build my marriage, like whatever, just shoot me a text and whatever it is. Like, let's talk about it. Let's connect. Dude, I, I know for a fact that this episode is going to change a lot of lives. So I really yeah, appreciate you. Uh, and I appreciate our relationship. I appreciate you making the time. And I know everybody watching appreciates you coming on.